Thanks for joining us again. We're on our topic of demonology, our study, our course of demonology uh, for Bible students. If you're a Bible student, thanks for joining as we study the Word together. The Bible says, study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that doesn't, won't need to be ashamed. Okay, so we're on to, in our second series of, of messages, we, uh, we started in our first session on why in the world would anybody study demonology. We've dealt, dealt with that in former videos, and we've started on what are demons. And so, sorry, I'm expounding to, to you what are demons, all right? So we, we're going through what they do and how they operate, because remember, what is the definition of the demonology? Demonology is a part of theology, just like you have eschatology, Christology, um, angelology, you have demonology, it's understanding um, the study of it's the study of demons and their activities. Okay, and so um, we continue on in this. What are demons? We said they're fallen angels. They're entities, intellects, right? Um, and they operate a certain way. Uh, I said to you in former videos that the two books we use, of course, the Bible, as we're studying the Bible, but also you can use Pigs in the Parlor by Frank and Ida Mae Hammond. And you will get in uh, some very important information. I highly recommend it. It should be a book in your in your your library if you're a Christian and you're a serious Christian, and uh, more so if you're a minister. All right, you should have that book in your library. Uh, let me throw at you really quickly. Stick a pin, and I want to throw in an imperative book too. Very small, very easy to read, called A Tale of Three Kings. That will help you to understand authority. In understanding demonology, the issue of hierarchy and spiritual authority is important and so I just want to throw that in there however pigs in the parlor so that book I just mentioned is a tale of three kings by Jean Edwards very important for every Christian especially Christian leader any if you have any leadership position in in in, in the body of Christ in the church make sure to read that book make sure to read that book in the name of Jesus because you need to understand how to deal with those that are in authority above you and, and those who God is raising up under you. So you don't try to kill them like Saul and David. That's where the three kings comes from. Saul, David, Absalom. You need to read that book. All right. But for this empowerment issue of understanding um, our adversary who goes about like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour, Pigs in the Parlor is your book. Okay, you have to get that book. And I want to recommend chapter 20. Now, in what we were talking about in the last video with, with um, how they operate and what they do, in this se segment, we were talking about what are demons. We were looking at how they operate and what they do. We talk about they resist the truth. They, they promote suffering. They promote false religion, promote fear, especially suicide too. They promote suicide. That's their crown jewel and so on. Promote stress and anxiety and so on. Look at chapter 20 of the book, Pigs in the Parlor, and it will show you something called demon groupings. They tend to operate in these gangs, these cliques that, that are functioning the, in certain ways. So you might want to understand that. Okay, if I, am, if I see this thing, if I perceive, if God is saying to me this thing of, uh, of, of rejection, this sense of rejection, overwhelming rejection, is there in my life? What also tends to come with it? Anger. What also tends to come with it? Cursing. I'm just saying for example, okay? So, in fact, I'm going to give you an example. If you don't have the book yet, I'm going to give you an example of some of the groupings that actually are referred to. And how do they know? Because of experience, years of experience of dealing with deliverance, they have found these clustered together. So, for instance, rejection is very common. And, and so what are demons? They are these entities that have these roles and these personalities and they do these things. And from, from Frank and Ida May Hammond's experience, they have found that these clusters operate together. Years of research, years of study, years of operating in deliverance. And similarly, I have experienced these things too. So I, I, I totally substantiate and, and, and support that book and its findings. So I'm going to give you some, so look at chapter 20 for yourself when you get the book, but also I'm going to give you just some ex examples, okay? Common deep and demon grooming, grouping, sorry, common demon groupings, okay? Um, worry, 
along with that tends to be anxiety, fear, dread, apprehension. They tend to function together. Rejection, as we said, is a common one. Fear of rejection, self-rejection tend to come together. Retaliation, destruction, spite, hatred, sadism, hurt, cruelty tends to be part of the gang with retaliation. With pride tends to come ego, vanity, self-righteousness, haughtiness, self-importance, arrogance. This gang tends to travel together. So it's important for you to note uh, as you understand what are demons. They are entities that operate. Now remember we said that they are not. They don't operate lawlessly in totality. There's are, there are some method to their madness. They function together in, in, in schools as such, right? Um, so you need to know that as, as you empower yourself as a Christian. Remember Luke 10, 19, Jesus says, Behold, I give unto you power. I give unto you power. Jesus gives you power by inform informing you. Not only informing you, but inviting you. He invites you in to the family of God to adopt you in, to those who would receive him, power to become sons of God. So you get that. But you also, once you get saved, you get information further information and with information remember the bible says you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free information is a power and so when you get the information you are being empowered so jesus says behold i give unto you power and he gives you authority by sonship by the invitation to be a son but he also gives you power might through information so that you say a thing you pray a thing you proclaim a thing you declare a thing and it, it gets established for you because of who you are and what you are, okay? And so it's important to know these things, to get the information so that you can handle yourself as a Christian, as a believer. Remember Mark 16 says, these signs shall follow those who believe. In my name, you're going to cast out devils. That's a part of it, right? Take up any deadly thing and so on and so on. But... An imperative to remember is also one of those things that uh, a believer's uh, heritage is the power and right to cast out these things that were running amok, these individuals that were clustering up in gangs and running amok for many years, all the, the, the time in history of the Old Testament, all that period, those years before Jesus is coming, you know, the BC periods, they ran amok and then Jesus comes. He gives you power and authority to handle these things. And I pray in the name of Jesus that you will walk in this authority, the power that God has given you, that you are now aware of these things. You would want to know if a cockroach is in your sink, if it's, if it's under your sink. You'd want to know if a mouse is, you know, building a nest under your bed. You would want to know. You would want to know if the snake is in your toilet. You would want to know. And in knowing you would want to take it out. I would think you'd want to remove this, this snake from your toilet bowl before you sit down. You'd want to remove the, the nest in the house, you know, the rat's nest, the mice nest. You'd want to remove. You'd want to remove the cockroaches from under the sink or in the sink. You'd want them out because you don't want to live with them. You don't want those pigs in your parlor, so to speak. You don't want those things in your house. And so God gives you the broom. He gives you the wherewithal the big on to spray the, the ants, to spray the lizard, to spray the roach, to, you know, he gives you the rat traps, to, or the mouse traps, the wherewithal, the knowledge and the ability to remove the thing to clean your house. He gives you that for a reason. He doesn't give you the broom and just expect for you to just let the dust forever build up. He doesn't give you the big on, the, the raid, for you just to have the can and say, what a nice, pretty can. Jesus says what he says and he teaches us what he teaches us because he means for us to exercise these things. And may we, even in these periods, this COVID time, in this you know, pandemic era, and in these eras of violence and clashes and, and uprisings and so on, may we learn to use proclamation, prayer, use intercession, use the power of praise, use things that we've been given to undo what these nefarious individuals are so we can push back against those things that go bump in the night 
you can rise up and bump back, push back in an effective way.